Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, wherever you are listening to this, whether the platform is YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Transistor, Anchor, you name it, make sure that you've subscribed. And if you get a chance, share the information you learn or copy and paste the link wherever you found this and share it with a neighbor, with an enemy, or with a stranger. If you have the means, go to patreon.com slash toahado and become a patron. Shout out to all of the new patrons. There are now 11 patrons contributing $154 a month. That really helps this ministry. If it gets to a certain point, I'm going to plan to open a free elementary school with an Orthodox Christian bent. And as you know, if you know me, scripture will be a heavy emphasis. It will be read every day according to God's will. Today we are in 1 John chapter 4, the first scroll of John chapter 4, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Probably have to switch it up for next week. I think I did a little bit too much of this, and one of my boys, Nate, was chastising me. He recently converted to Catholicism, and they're partial to certain other translations of the Bible that have more modern English. I don't mind switching things up. As long as we're in English, we're not using the original Greek, it's good to switch up versions to keep yourself honest and to notice different things about the text. Verses 1 to 3. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, and is now already in the world. It's incarnation or bust. He wore flesh, or he didn't. Take a stand on that. Examine all those who do or don't. Test them. Test every spirit. Test those in your branch of Christianity. Test those and examine those in your jurisdiction. Examine those in your parish. Examine yourself. Make sure that you have this confession. We'll get into what confession means a little bit later. Verses 4 to 6. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So here we see in the Johnine literature, as in the Pauline literature, one of the apostles putting himself in a fatherly relationship with people he considers children, who are those whom he is training up in the word. There are some people who self-identify as Christians and struggle when they hear us in the Orthodox or in the Catholic communities using the word father in reference to a human being. We have to understand that every usage of this is functional, and of course the chief father of fathers is our father who art in heaven. Let's not get crazy in either direction. The church is always put in contradistinction with the world. There's a dichotomy, a binary. You have two options, right? Light or dark, truth or error, church or world, God or them. There is an emphasis on hearing, and hearing is always tied to doing. You're not a gargoyle. You're not a lawn gnome or a lawn jockey. You have ears, not of stone, but ears of flesh. And ears of flesh should be able to have the word of God's instruction imprinted on them. Meaning, you obey what you hear. It doesn't just seep into your ear through one end and exit the other, as if it's doing one of these escape houses. 
No, it goes in one ear and it stays there. It writes on your brain, the brain writes on your mouth, and the mouth writes on your deeds and on your actions. Verses 7 to 11. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Here I take a minority opinion. The Greek says monogenes. It's a similar root to the words we find in English, homogenous and heterogeneous. Heterogeneous is a different kind. Hetero meaning different. Homogenous is same kind. Monocle is one I thing. Monopoly is one person taking over. So when we understand the prefix mono is one and genus is kind, we could understand that monogenous or monogenous, however you want to pronounce it, is one of a kind. So I stray from this only begotten that we see in a lot of our creedal formulas. And I like to say when I talk that the Lord Jesus is the one of a kind. Sometimes we use the Latin phrase in English, sui generis. Jesus Christ is sui generis. He is one of a kind. He's unique, but he's one of a kind. And this one of a kind, God, man, Jesus, shows us that we need to respond to godly love because even though his son was so unique, his son was so one of a kind, so sui generis, God showed us love that he has toward us through his son and what he did through his son. And so in response, we need to love all of humanity which we encounter, especially those people I mentioned in the beginning, the neighbors, the strangers, the enemies. And our childhood in the Most High will be stamped on Judgment Day which is what we, what we hold in confidence and in hope. I'll get back to this point, as you'll see it later in the text. Verses 12 to 16. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. During the pandemic, during this plague that we're in in 2020, we are meeting through Zoom or through Google Meet, through video chatting. And when we do this, we acknowledge that it's not the bricks, the rocks, the stones in a literal sense or according to the letter that we focus on that build up the temple of God. But the temple of God is built by the cornerstone Jesus Christ. By Peter and Paul, who are rocks that go on top of the cornerstone, and by all of the bishops, priests, deacons, choir members, and faithful who have come across time and space to be built upon the Pauline and Petrine church, which are built on the cornerstone, which is God's one-of-a-kind son, Jesus Christ, who saves the whole world. And we confess him, we believe him and in him, and abide in him and he in us, when our thoughts, words, actions, and deeds reflect the love that he showed to us. Verses 17 to 19. Love has been perfected among us in this, 
that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. In the Psalms and in elsewhere in the wisdom literature, I believe in Proverbs, we find this very famous phrase, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. It was so deeply ingrained in the Ethiopian community. My aunts, my parents, they used to have this quoted and written in Giz and in Amharic on the walls of their school. They used to read it every day. And even if most people did not know scripture deeply, they knew at least this phrase amongst others that had entered the idiomatic language of Amharic, just like the English language is dominated by the KJV in terms of idiomatic expressions. And it's beautiful. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. The beginning of wisdom is awe of God. Our God is an awesome God. The word awesome is abused nowadays. Our God is a marvelous God, a splendiferous God, a splendid God, a sublime God. That feeling you get when you look at the prairies, when you look at the oceans, the seven seas, when you look at the mountains, when you look at the vastness of space, the depths. How much greater is it when you think about God? So feeling that is good. But remember the men of Galilee who are chastised by the angels, according to Luke. Men of Galilee, why are you staring at the sky? Why do you awe? Why do you marvel? Why do you fear? Why do you sublime? Instead, once you get things straight, like the men of Galilee, you begin going to work, doing the gospel that you heard. It's okay to marvel briefly, but in the perfection of your love, you will stop marveling and you will start doing. It's very easy for me before I started this podcast prior to 2016 when I had the first version to simply be a fan of the Ephesus School Network, which at the time was just the Bible as literature podcast. I could sit there and just listen, but the perfect love of the Bible is Literature podcast led me to start my own podcast. Does that mean all of my listeners need to start a podcast as well? Not necessarily. It's a good idea, but not necessarily. It does mean that my listeners, my audience, have to do something. Find some way to glorify God and to sow his seed. If that means finding one person by a well, like Jesus did with the Samaritan woman in the gospel according to John chapter 4, do that. If it means reaching out to strangers at a beach, a park, an intersection, do that. If it means using social media, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, even LinkedIn, do that. Whatever it is, find your lane, find your specialty, find somewhere where you can sow the seed of God and do so constantly and consistently. And on that occasion of the second advent, of the second coming of our Lord Jesus, our, the one-of-a-kind Son of God, you can have confidence and hope in the judgment that is mentioned here from verses 17 to 19. We'll do 20 and 21, and that's all I got for you today, folks. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. I love the apostle John. He's relentless. He does not care about your feelings. He cares about righteousness. He makes it very simple and plain. God is invisible. Human beings are visible. Don't tell me that you love the invisible God when you do not love the visible human beings made in his image and his likeness. A lot is made of self-identification. 
these days. It is a modern and postmodern idol. Self-identification is something to take under consideration as basic decency. However, it cannot be the sole test of a human being. You must test that human being as well because self-identification can lead to BS. You must reverse the fratricide, the killing or the murder of brothers in Genesis chapter 4 between Abel and Cain, between the fleeting vanishing breath and the possessor. And you must replace it and overturn it with Philadelphia, which we'll get to in John's revelation, which is brotherly love. Glory to God for all things.